In order to trim perfect brass, the cutter head adjustment is critical. In this video, I'm going to show you two ways to adjust the Henderson V3 cutter head. Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. In my last Henderson video, we took the V3 trimmer out of the box. We got it set up, we got it mounted to the bench, and we trimmed some six dasher brass. And we got a really, really nice trim. The only real adjustment we made to the machine was the depth stop that controls the length of the cut. In other words, the length of your case after it's been trimmed. Now, what if you want to switch calibers on your cutter head? I would recommend that you get dedicated cutter heads for each common caliber, i.e. The, the neck diameter that you're gonna be trimming for. So if you get a replacement cutter head, these are gonna be interchangeable with Forrester Pilots, which is great. We've got the blades retracted from the center here. Let's do a quick anatomy of, of what's going on with the cutter head. There's three different set screws. There's the set screw for the left blade. The left blade cuts the case to length. So this horizontal portion here is cutting. And then this little angled ramp here is gonna be performing the inside chamfer on the case neck. This little set screw is going to lock in the position left and right, which is going to be proportional to the diameter of the case. The center set screw is for the pilot, which slips down in. That gets secured by this center set screw. And then the right set screw secures the OD chamfer or the outside diameter chamfer blade in place. This has this little, what looks like a corner that's missing. That's going to chamfer the outside of the case neck. These are both carbide blades, so they're gonna stay razor sharp for a long time, and unless you drop it on the floor or something like that, they're gonna last for a really, really long time. So when we go to set up the cutter head, these cut blades are both retracted. I'm gonna start by installing the pilot. So we're gonna just put that down into place and then tighten the set screw. Now we also need to have a sized case. I've got a sized dasher case. We also annealed it in this particular case. I have a small batch of that that we're gonna trim this time. We're gonna loosen the set screw for that left blade, which is the length and ID chamfer and retract it all the way. Then we're gonna take the case and slip it over the pilot and the blade is retracted a little bit too far at this point. Now this is where it takes a little bit of feel. We're gonna push down on the blade and push away from the pilot to essentially retract it just a little bit where it's engaged with that inside portion of the case neck that we're gonna chamfer. And what's really important on both sides here is to push down as you're tightening the set screw so that the blade is perfectly parallel with the top of the cutter head and of course the little track that it slides in there, the slot. Okay, so then we're gonna crack tension on the OD, and as we're pushing down ever so slightly, we're gonna push inward with pressure, and this is where it's gonna take a little bit of experimentation, and then lock down that. So we have the left blade secured, and it, I've ensured that it's parallel. We have the pilot secured, and we have the right blade perfectly positioned left, right, and secured as well. Now we can do a quick test to see if it's trimming the way we want. So we're gonna take the cutter head, put it in the machine, tighten the drawbar, and we're just gonna give this just a little bit of snug. That taper locks down really well, kinda on its own. Okay, and then I'm gonna put the safety shield back in place. Right on, let's go ahead and trim a case. we might need to readjust our length. That looks really, really good. Very slight OD chamfer, slight ID chamfer, and a nice ring on the end. So we've got just slight chamfer, solid trim to length, looks really, really good. So for the second technique here, it's gonna work a little bit better for me to show this to you with it held in a bench vise. And if you have soft jaws and you're real careful with it, not a bad way to hold the cutter head while you're adjusting it with either technique, really. And we're starting off at the same point we did last time. We've got the cutter head, the blades are retracted, they're locked in place, and the pilot is not in place. And we're just gonna need two special tools here, 0.156 inch 
pin gauge, 156 thousandths, and a set of feeler gauges. And if you click on that first link in the video description, I'll have an entire chart that shows you for each caliber what range of feeler gauges you're going to need. I determined that I would go with 13 thousandths of an inch. And let me show you where that comes in. Is We're just going to put that between the pin gauge and the left blade. We're going to loosen the set screw on the left blade, push it towards the middle and down, ensuring that it is captive and parallel. So against the pin gauge and down parallel. Let's see how we did. That looks good. And what we should have is just a little bit of friction with this feeler gauge down there. Just like that, I can feel it slide with just a little bit of force. So that locks in the left blade. Now we can remove the pin gauge, put our pilot back in place. And the technique for the right hand side is the same as what I showed for the first overall process. We're gonna get the case down here. We're gonna hold it in place, put just a little pressure between the blade and the outside diameter of the case neck. I've just barely got any tension on there. Make sure that we're parallel and pushing down a little bit there. Lock it down and that should be good. Now, I'm gonna take this opportunity to make sure that we're good and tight with things here. Okay. So, let's go ahead and install this in the trimmer, do a test trim and see how things look. All right, turn the machine on, load the case. Again, we've got the slightest outside chamfer. We have a very slight inside chamfer. We have a nice flat face on the front. That is perfection. So there you go, two different ways to adjust the cutter head on your Henderson V3 trimmer. And if you are interested in the box contents, the setup process, how to get your trim length adjusted, you're gonna to wanna to check out that first video. Here's what I wanna know from you is, what do you think of the Henderson V3 trimmer? What do you think of the setup process for the cutter head? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.